Hello everyone and welcome to this video. In this video we're going to be looking at Xenosaga 2 for the PlayStation 2. The game was released in 2004 and was developed by Monolith Soft and published by Namco. Xenosaga 2 is the second game in a trilogy which has connections to past PlayStation 1 games such as Xenogears and the recently released Nintendo Switch Xenoblade Chronicles 2 where Cosmos makes an appearance in that. So looking back at this past trilogy, should you give it a try or not? The game story is set hot off the heels of the very first game, and sees Shion and the gang returning back to Vector headquarters. The team are pretty much hunted right from the very start of the game by the Utech organisation as they try in vain to kidnap Momo. As the game's story progresses, you'll learn more about each one of the characters' pasts, and I'll also come to understand the reasoning behind the Utech organization's plans and everything else that folds around you. Much like the first game in this trilogy, the story is nothing short of fantastic. The story and events that unfold in this series really are amazingly well told, especially today when looking back on it and realising that this was a PlayStation 2 game. Xenosaga 2 has an incredible story to tell, and it does it perfectly, by having everything divided up just right. You have the right amount of character development, the right amount of character story, the right amount of character exploring, and everything else just comes together to tell a great story. However, that's where the game's problems essentially begin, as everything else seems to have suffered as a consequence. Here's where things start to take a downward spiral. The game's gameplay. The first Xenosaka game had a solid plot, great graphics, and your traditional JRPG combat style that worked and worked well, and was well received. Then for the sequel, some genius said let's scrap that combat system that works, and instead let's do one that clearly no one wants or will like. Instead of your traditional options in combat of attack, skills, specials and what else you would generally expect, you now have this stupid system of having to stock attacks. And because of this stock system, the attack option no longer works, as the attacks are essentially useless now, because doing a single attack hardly causes any damage at all. It's basically rendered a standard attack as completely pointless. In order to beat any enemy that you happen to come across now, it's a case of having to pile up the stock system, and then once that's out of the way, you now have this new system, which is the ABC system, and consists of you targeting exact zones on a character. It just doesn't work. Aside from this useless new battle system, there's also the annoyingly bad difficulty spikes as well. Now practically any enemy you face in a game is overpowered and feels far more difficult than they should be. I honestly don't understand what the hell was going through the developers heads when they were putting this game together, but it almost feels like you should be at the level that you were when you finished Xenosaga 1 for the start of Xenosaga 2, but you're not. So right from the very start of the game, the gameplay is essentially an unpleasant uphill struggle, as it feels like when you're level 15, every single enemy that you'll come across at that point will be level 30 you just don't really stand a chance. And the only way to make any of this work is to do grinding, grinding, and a lot more grinding. And honestly, I just don't really want to do that. It just ruins the gameplay. The game's characters, at least personality-wise, have at least stayed the same. And this time around, we get to learn more about each one of them, such as finding out about more about Zeke's past and how he committed suicide and how he was recreated as a cyborg. We also learn more about Xion and her difficult relationship with her brother, and how this time around in this game we see things from Jin's point of view and we see that a lot of the problems are actually caused by Xion and her own doing. The game also introduces a few new characters into the mix, but really I don't feel like they stand out that much, if at all, and some just kind of come across as completely pointless altogether, such as Kanan. The Xenosaga trilogy has some of the best characters and best character development seen in the video game series for a long time. The first game did an amazing job introducing these characters, 
and Siena Saga 2 does a great job of continuing to add to that. However, they do come across as slightly ruined by the whole bizarre look and changing gameplay and a whole host of other changes that fans just didn't want. So here we come across yet another problem. When it comes to the graphics, the same idiot who was in charge of messing with the game's gameplay clearly had another stupid idea of changing the game's graphics and appearance. The first game follows the anime look in style and appearance when it comes to its characters, and for some reason they dropped this for the second game and tried to make things look more westernised, I guess would be the word. It just comes across as bad, especially when you look at some characters such as Momo and Junior. The graphics for the game have had an upgrade and everything does look kind of nice, but because of what's been done to the graphics and appearance of the main characters, it just kind of spoils everything. The world in which Xenotarka takes place has only gotten bigger from the first game in the trilogy. Areas are bigger, and there's much more to explore now. However, everything does feel slightly... sterile. I'm not sure why exactly, but when I walk around the city at the start of the game, I just don't feel it. Perhaps it's the fact I was in shock when I played this for the first time and I just wasn't really prepared for how different the characters were going to look. Maybe it's just I felt extremely disenchanted after my first battle because it was just so awful. It could be a whole host of reasons. My point is, is while the game's environments may possibly be bigger, the areas just don't really feel alive in this game, and considering some of the levels that were actually given in Xenozarka 2, that really is quite sad. We have some great levels that could have been a whole lot better than they were. Instead, they just feel stagnant. They feel like they're missing that something that gives them an extra oomph. Xenosaga 2 is still a rather good game, despite all of its flaws, such as how the characters' appearances have changed, or how the combat system was just completely and utterly messed up. I still would recommend the game, but only if you are playing the first game, the second game, and then finally the third one. While I wasn't too happy with the shift in story from the Gnosis to the more human aspect of things, I can also understand why this was done. Originally, this was meant to be more than just a trilogy, but bad sales and feedback of this game changed all of that. The third game ended up being the last in the story, so the game's story got cut back quite a fair bit. And the third game essentially suffered because of stupid mistakes that were made with the second. I can't help but feel like if the second game had kept everything that made the first game good about it, it would have done a whole lot better. The only real thing about Xenozaga 2 that they have gotten right is the mech battles. These are a much welcome addition, as these see your characters taking control of giant robots to fight other giant robots on Gnosis. They're a great new feature, but annoyingly there's not many battles with them in. So as great as they are, they just end up feeling wasted. If you are going to play the Xenozaga trilogy, then you're going to love Xenozaga 1, feel like 2 is a chore, and then when you get to 3, and you'll just feel sad because 3 is utterly fantastic and sadly, there isn't any more of it. Well, that's it for this review guys, thanks for listening, thanks for watching, and please subscribe.